Day five, science experiment, salty or fresh. So what we are going to do is we are going to see the effect of salt water versus fresh water on if things sink or float. Well, on our earth, we have both salty and fresh water. So you want to be sure to tell the kids about that. Um, you can ask them if they've ever gone to the beach and got the salt water in their mouth, what it tasted like. Um, but make sure that you let them know that we need that salt water because it is home to tons and tons of living things that need to be there. In fact, a lot of our oxygen comes from the ocean, the things that live in the ocean. So I had made some salt water in advance. I boiled some water. And then according to the measurements in the guide, I made this salt water. And so I have one little cup that I used a Sharpie to write salty on and one that has fresh water. And then I have a variety of objects. So what we're gonna do here is put an object in each of these cups to see if they sink or if they float. So the kids will have a paper in their resources that they can check off ahead of time as to if they think each item is going to sink or float. And then they can also mark what actually did happen. So I'm not going to do all of these. Um, you do want to be aware that when you do the egg, the egg may overflow your cups a bit. So you might not want to have quite as much in your cup. I think I overflowed this one a little bit, so I'm not going to test the egg. Um, let's just try. What do you think about the rock? I think they're both going to sink. Let's see. Fresh sink. Salty sink. Hmm, maybe a paper clip. Let's try that. Fresh sink. Oh, salty sink. What about a Brit? Fresh sink. Oh, the salty one floated. Okay, so some are going to float because this, the water, the salt in the water makes things more buoyant. So there's a mystery that we can solve. Jewel treasures. So God is just so amazing. I've just put a few of his attributes out here. Um, I'll give you a couple of tips. When we did this one, I made these hearts um, beforehand, and I just, sorry, I just tacked them up all around the room. And so that I could just have the kids look at the walls to find an attribute of God that they wanted to say. And I had them each come up and get a jewel, a gem, and put it into the cup and say their attribute as they did it. And we had the rest of the room stay quiet. Now, a tip to remember, um, what we're gonna do is the kids are gonna fill this and then we're gonna ask them if it's full. So when you have your smaller gems and your water that you're gonna be putting in after there, you wanna have those hidden. You don't want the kids to see them. So make sure those are put away somewhere. So what we did here, is like I said, each kid chose an attribute and you don't have to put them on the wall. The kids can just think up something. But we made this a very reverent time for the kids to come up and choose an attribute of God. And when they put their jewel into the cup, they would say that attribute. Now, what we do here is you just have the kids put them in one at a time. We just you know went around the room and the kids all came up. And when we got this full of gems, we would say to them, do you think it is full? And they would, you know, the young ones would say yes, and the older ones, they know a little bit more, so they would say no. So then we would pour in the smaller gems just to show that they will go down there into the cracks, and certainly we were not full. And then you can even tie in the fact that even if you think you know so much about God, there's still so much more that we don't know yet. And then even when they all do finally agree that your cup is full, Go ahead and add some water. And then they'll be like, oh, wow, you can even add all of that water. So it was a really good lesson for the kids to learn that there is so much about God that is a mystery to us. Some things we do know, some things we may never know, but just keep learning about them and love them. Thank you.